There is a concept known as the win-win concept, where it's good for you and it's good for me and the heck with everybody else. Right? But there's another concept. Um, I, have a, I, I grew up with a penchant for words. Both my mother and father um, taught me a lot about words and really gave me a love for words. And I, I feel perfectly comfortable inventing words where necessary. So I have invented a few, and a few have even made it into the dictionary this year. So I'm excited about that. But, um, but one of the ones that hasn't yet made it into the dictionary, because it has to find its way in print first, uh, is, is the situation that has no downsides whatsoever. There are occasional situations that we will find in life that have no downsides. It is not win-win. It's win-win-win-win-win all the way around the block, up and down, all, okay? A situation with no downsides. For one of those to be described properly, to be defined, would be called winfinity. Okay? Now, I look at 801010 as a winfinity situation because, as far as I can tell, it has no downsides. No more than inventing a calculator. Sure, yeah, the people who made slide rules might have thought it was a downside. All right, but it turned out that that little pocket calculator and the computers that were related to it more than made up in uh, financial energy for the, for the slide rule departments, you know, for the slide rule um, manufacturers to go out of business. It would be amazing. It would, it would be such a, a wild thing to say, you know what? The 801010 diet, it's really good for the animals. It's really good for the environment. It's good for the economy. Farmers make more money selling fruits and vegetables than they do selling corn. Uh, it's good for desertification. We're actually creating health on planet Earth. It stops global warming if we would just start planting trees instead of fields of grain. It, oh, it's good for human health. It's good for human performance. It's good for our clarity of mind. It's an animal rights issue. We create homes for creatures by planting trees. It's good on virtually all levels, except your teeth are going to rot out of your face. <laughs> Well, it turns out that I've been to dentist's office in my life, and never once have I met a raw fooder or another 80 cent tenor in the dentist's office. What I find is that the dentist's office is filled with people who eat cooked food, which is an unfair answer because really, obviously, everybody's eating cooked food, so we would expect that. And so what I did is I went to a, I went to a, a seminar that was a personal development seminar some years ago. Turns out that the guy who put this whole seminar program together, had an in in the dental industry. And he had a niche. And when he first started marketing this program, he only marketed it to dentists. Because they are, after all, um, the professionals with the highest suicide rate. And, and they are, sorry for this, but they are down in the mouth more than anybody. And, um, and so, he marketed this personal development program for dentists. Well, it grew and it grew and it grew, and, it, and now it, it opens up to other professionals as well, and, and anybody that wants to go to it can. Um, and I was there for five days at a pretty high-level program. But there was only 75 attendees, and 70 of them were dentists. And every specialty within dental care was, was there, and I asked, as I, once I got to meet everybody, I eventually asked four dentists this question. What causes tooth decay? Now, I do have a section in my book about it, so I do answer the question there as well. But I asked four dentists, and, the first, and I swear to God, strike me down in my spot. If this is not one, two, three, four. Four dentists, four answers. Why do we get tooth decay? First one said, because we eat too much fat. I go, okay, that's interesting. Second dentist, because we don't eat enough fat. Third dentist, because we eat too much carbohydrate. Fourth dentist, because we don't eat enough carbohydrate. What I realized is dentists don't have a clue about this particular issue. And they shouldn't, because we have to understand that, that what I am presenting to you here 
is part of a bigger package of what I present. I teach health. My specialty is in health. I'm a doctor of health. I've been studying health since I was 16 years old. At first because I couldn't help myself and eventually because I really fell in love with it. And, and with very few sidetracks in college, I have stuck to health all the time in my personal and professional life. And there are only two philosophies out there, as it were. There's a health philosophy and there's a medical philosophy. The medical philosophy is essentially a 3M, which is really a 4M program. It's easy to remember if you just think 3M. They monitor, they maintain, and they manage your disease with medicine and surgery. Drugs and surgery are the answer to everything in the medical model. And the medical model essentially states that in order to create health from ill health, you have to supply different substances, forces, influences, and conditions than you would supply in health. And so if you're a kid, drink plenty of milk if you're healthy. But if you're sick, don't drink milk because it'll make you congested, congested. And there's a war on drugs. Don't take drugs. Drugs will make you sick. Unless you're sick, in which case take drugs. Drugs will make you well. As if everybody didn't know that the war on drugs is over and the drugs won. <laughs> and that model gets applied again and again and again. Homeopathic remedies will do nothing if you're well, but they'll get you well if you're sick. And it leaves me wondering, how do the drugs know? How does the milk know if you're sick or well? That it should get you, keep you well if you're well and make you congested if you're sick. Come on, I mean, it's, I'm not telling people what to think, but I'd like them to think. The other model, the health model, says substances, forces, influences, and conditions required for health when you're healthy are identical to those required for health when you're not healthy, modified to meet the needs of the individual at any given time. There's times you need more exercise, there's times you need more rest, there's times you need more food, there's times you need more sleep, but these are essential items and that the substances, forces, influences, and conditions required to build health are the same at all times, just the quantities vary to meet the needs of the individual at any given time, as opposed to completely different if you're sick or if you're well. Get surgery if you're sick, don't get surgery if you're well. I mean, it goes on and on. So, with that in mind, we then look and go a, as you mentioned, you're starting from a compromised dental position. To expect health to happen is wishful. It's optimistic. But whether or not it really will, because really what you're looking at is a cycle of decay that has been, it's a, it's a domino cycle of decay that the first domino got ticked in when you were three or two. And, and it's just been ticking along ever since. And now you're expecting it to slow down, stop, and reverse while we wonder if maybe the sugars in fruit are what's... While the doctors have been telling us to eat an apple a day, why? Because it'll rot your teeth out? No. In fact, uh, the thing that's harmful on your teeth is dehydrated food. Dehydrated food sticks to your teeth. All cooked food is dehydrated. Oh yeah, forgot that. All cooked food is dehydrated. That's why dental offices are filled with people because they're eating food that sticks to their teeth. Come on, look at how it sticks to the pots and pans. You think it doesn't stick to your teeth? Meanwhile, all nuts and seeds bought in store are dehydrated, or they will go moldy within a few days. They're dehydrated from almost 90% water by weight down to 7% water by weight in order so that they will not go moldy in the bins. All right. They are dehydrated food, and then obviously all the dehydrates are dehydrated, and they stick to your teeth. Dehyd anything sticks to your teeth, it'll ruin your teeth for a variety of issues, whether it's nuts and seeds or whether it's fruit. I do recommend cleaning your teeth after you eat, maybe brushing in between your teeth or actually brushing your teeth or rinsing your mouth or something. It's not a bad idea to take care of your teeth as if you expected them to last for a lifetime. And knowing full well that you started with a compromised situation, it's like, whoa. However, the key concept here is it is never wrong to do the right thing. Healthful living has no contraindications. 
plain and simple. So people will say, well, yes, but I've got diabetes. Should I live healthfully? Or I get migraine headaches. Should I live healthfully? Or I'm an athlete. Should I live healthfully? Or I've got this, that, the next endless reasons. You know, I live up north. I live down south. I had, and one day, I had a guy email me. He said, you know, I'm a traveling salesman. So when I'm on the road, I can follow your diet perfectly. When I'm, at home, when I'm at home, it's almost impossible. There's so much outside influence at home. On the same day, I got an email from another client who said, you know, when I'm at home, I can do exactly, I can follow this program perfectly. But when I go out on the road for business, I just lose the plot. What should I do? I, I typed him back the email of the other guy. I said, you two need to talk. Get me out of the picture. I don't need to solve this.